Hey Arlo and Frank. Greetings again from out in the Atlantic Ocean. We're actually going to be in a new ocean by tomorrow when I do my last one of these on this cruise ship. I'm going to do two videos today, then one more tomorrow, which will be in, in the Mediterranean Ocean. By the time I do it, we'll be sailing along the coast of Spain. So you'll get to see Spain a little bit in the background. And um, the first thing that I want to talk to you today about is Anita's funeral. I told you about Anita yesterday. In 1996, I got saved. And when you get saved, people usually don't understand what that means. They think it means that you think you're better than them. Like, oh, I'm a Christian now, so I'm better than you. But really what it means is that you realize that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus in your life to save you. So that happened to me in, I believe, maybe February of 1996. At some point in time after that, Ann Edith died. And I was asked to say something at her viewing, which is what Methodists call a funeral. The funeral's actually out at, at the gravesite. But this was this was in the chapel at the Methodist home. And I got up there and a lot of people didn't understand what I was saying there either because in Christianity a lot of people take a cookie cutter approach to what the Bible says about what. And at the end of this, I, I had people come up to me and say, well, that wasn't really an appropriate Bible section that you read because that's for weddings. It's not, it's not for funerals. Nothing could be further from the truth. So you guys, as you get older and you wrestle with your faith, and right now, Frank, you're in your 20s, Arlo, you too. So you're at a different point in your growing up, although you're not even thinking about these things right now. Frank, I'm sure you're thinking about them all the time, especially given the, the background that you have in your family there in Salem County and in your natural family. Well, I mean, your natural family in Salem County, but some of that isn't natural by blood. But then our family and, and your background and everything, knowing what, what your dad struggled with. And, and my son, when he died in 2017, my son Frank, he was a believer in Jesus and I'll see him someday. Now he's, he struggled with that greatly, but we all struggle somewhat. Some of us struggle more than others. But I have that hope. When I think back and say, well, could I have done something differently? Is this my fault? That I can say, well, you know what? After I became a believer myself, I told my son Frank about that. And then he gave his life to Jesus. So whatever decisions he made, he understood that those decisions affected him and they may affect other people, but no decision as a Christian means that you're better than somebody else. It usually means that you're just the person who realizes how wicked and sinful and, and horrible we are as human beings. So at the funeral, I got up and, and I, I read something. Before I read it, I said, look, in life, we're supposed to be like Jesus. And none of us can be like Jesus. No man who was made could ever live up to being Jesus. Because Jesus is God. 
And God is love. And so if we're supposed to be as much like Jesus as we, as we want, as, as, as we can be, then we want to be as much like God as we can be. Jesus is kind of the bridge. Even though he is God, he serves a little different purpose. It's hard for us to be like God. But what ties that together? God is love. So we want to be like Jesus, and Jesus is God, and God is love, so we want to be like love. Is there any place in the Bible that it tells you what love is? There sure is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. And they say this, Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envious. Love does not brag. It is not puffed up. It is not rude. It is not self-serving. It is not easily angered or resentful. It is not glad about injustice, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, and I think by all things, it means all things good, all things godly. Hopes all things, endures all things, love never ends. So you can put in there Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus is not envious. You can go through every one of those things and they perfectly describe who Jesus is. When I first got saved, I learned this little exercise. I stole this from somebody. This is not my brilliance. They said to you, if you want to know if you're becoming more like Jesus every day, put your name in here. Frank is patient. Frank is kind. Frank's not envious. Frank does not brag. He's not puffed up. I could go on and on and tell you lies about where I am, but there's very few of those things that I can measure up to even a little bit. But let's put Aunt Edith in there and see what we get. Now I want to tell you that these people that I was speaking to, they all knew Aunt Edith. They were at her funeral. They knew her well. They knew what an amazing person she was. Aunt Edith was patient. Aunt Edith was kind. She was not envious. She did not brag. She was not puffed up. She was not rude. She wasn't self-serving. She was not easily angered or resentful. She was not glad about injustice, but rejoiced in the truth. She bore all things, believed all things, hoped all things, endured all things, especially that life of misery and pain caused by our greatest. Aunt Edith never ends. And like I said in the beginning, you can't be perfectly in line with this scripture. You just can't, because you're not Jesus. But I hope someday that I'll measure up half as well as Anita. And I know I'll see her again someday. And we'll have a good old time. And she won't be bothered with the arthritis. And she'll walk perfectly. And I can't wait for that day. So anyway, guys, think about that. Because you may live lives of pain. There's one thing that will get you through, and that's Jesus. Let him do it. Peace out.